I wanted to do a short little video, more or less kind of like an air brake refresher, but just kind of re-educating ourselves on the air brake components and what their job is and kind of what they do. So as drivers, we tend to forget a lot of the things regarding the air brake system. So this is kind of like a little refresher. So here we have our air brake board, which we use to teach air brakes uh, at the school here. Um, just want to let you kind of figure out here by looking at it, if we just kind of zoom in on the board we see it's labeled tractor and on the right we have trailer. So we'll just zoom back out here. Okay, so the section on the left is the tractor, the section on the right is the trailer. So we're going to start with the components on the tractor with regards to the air brake system. So we're going to come in here. We're going to start off with our service tanks. So every truck will have a supply tank, which has a double check valve. Supply tank provides air to the primary tank reservoir and the primary tank has a one-way check valve and the supply tank also provides air to the secondary reservoir and it has a one-way check valve as well. So those are our service tanks on the truck. We're going to start off with some of the basic components. We're going to start off with the supply circuit. So our supply circuit consists of the following components. We have an air compressor, which works the same as any air compressor does. Inside there's a piston that goes up and down. It's made to generate air. So that compressor is bolted to the side of the engine, usually located on the driver's side, and it runs off gear drive with the engine. Next we have a governor. Okay. Governor is usually bolted to the side of the compressor. So if I scan up here, it's usually bolted to where those two yellow lines run to. This one's on the board, which is fine. Uh, the governor is basically a device that governs the pressure in the system. It, uh, it's what puts the compressor in the loaded and unloaded cycle. So it basically tells the compressor when to make air and one not to make air. So we have the governor as well. Next, we have the air dryer. So the air dryer receives air off the compressor. Air flows through the high pressure steel braided line, goes into the dryer. The air is then filtered through the dryer. Then the air exits the dryer via this black line, could be blue, but this line runs to your supply tank. And then as the supply tank gets filled, that air is pressurized and the pressure builds in the system. So we have compressor, governor, air dryer. Next component in the supply circuit is our safety valve. This valve is set to go off at 150 PSI and it's a fail safe in case the governor fails. The pressure in the system won't reach over 150. So our safety valve. We also have on the bottom of our service tanks, we have drain valves on our primary and our secondary, as well as our supply tank. So those are the components that make up the supply circuit. Now we're gonna do some things on brake chambers. So on your front steering axle, you're gonna have what are known as type 20 
service brake chambers. The type is determined by the size of the diaphragm inside the chamber. So it measures 20 square inches. That's how we get the type. So we have our type 20 brake chamber. Brake chamber has a push rod that exits the chamber. It connects to your slack adjuster with a clevis and cotter pin. And then your slack adjuster is attached to an S camshaft, which goes inside the back of the wheel. So our steering axle, we have type 20s. Also on our steering axle, we have what's called a quick release valve. So this valve is designed to get rid of air quickly. So when we make a brake application and we take our foot off that brake, it's designed to let air escape faster and the faster we get rid of the air, the faster the brakes are going to release. Quick release valve. Okay, a lot of trucks have what's called a hand valve. Some truckers call it the spike. Uh, some truckers have called it the company brake. Um, I wouldn't use that terminology though. But this hand valve allows the driver to act to operate the trailer service brakes independently of the tractor. So we mainly use this up until 1975 before spring brakes came into effect. So the driver would get close enough to the trailer, hook up his airlines, supply air to the trailer, pull the hand valve, activate the service brakes on the trailer so it would stay in place while he was connecting to it. But now all of our trucks and trailers pretty much have spring brakes. So this is becoming a obsolete option. A lot of newer trucks may not have a hand valve. So your hand valve is located usually on the right side of the steering column, just under the steering wheel. And on some trucks, it could be a handle on the dash or a lever on the dash. So you got your hand valve. Next, we're gonna talk about our brake pedal. So our brake pedal is known as a control valve. It also has a couple other different names. It's referred to as a treadle, T-R-E-A-D-L-E, -E, treadle valve. And it's also referred to as a dual circuit control valve. Because this valve is designed to operate two types of air, primary and secondary, simultaneously. So that's our brake pedal. Next, we're gonna talk about the dash valves. So in a truck, you're gonna have a yellow button and a red button. Your yellow button is your parking brake for the truck. Red is the air supply valve for the trailer. So how these buttons work is basically when you push the yellow button in, it allows air to flow and run to the spring brake chambers on your drive axles. And that air pressure compresses the spring, which releases the service brake at the wheel. So we push air or push the button in to supply air to compress the spring inside the chamber. I'll talk about this a little bit shortly. The trailer air supply valve is supplying air to the trailer when you push it in. So when we push the red button in and we're connected to a trailer, that sends air from the primary and secondary tanks on the truck. It sends that air through the tractor protection valve. And then your air lines connect to the tractor protection valve, usually on the back of the truck. So these are what we connect to the trailer. Now, speaking about the airlines, proper name and terminology is the blue line is our service or control line. The blue line carries the air signal from our brake application to the relay valve on the trailer, which makes the service brake supply on the trailer. The red line is our emergency or also known as supply line. And the red, lines, red line provides a continuous supply of air between the tractor and the trailer to keep the trailer service tanks full of air.
Next, we're going to talk about our brake chambers. So here we have a Type 30 spring brake chamber. Okay, of course, your brake chambers aren't going to have air pressure gauges mounted onto them. These are on for teaching purposes. So how we know this is a Type 30 spring brake chamber is we look at the inlet ports where the airlines connect, and these are round shaped. So if they have a round shape, it's a Type 30 spring brake chamber. We have Type 30 long strokes, Type 30 LS, and we can identify those by square shaped inlet ports for the airlines. So we have our brake chamber. Now the brake chamber consists of basically two chambers. On the right side, we have our spring brake chamber where our mechanical spring is inside. On the left side, we have our service brake chamber, which allows us to operate the service brakes on the vehicle. We have an applied stroke indicator, which makes our job a little easier, especially when we're checking brake adjustment. These are known as uh, uh, poker chips. Poker chips, that's right. So we call, a lot of drivers call them poker chips because they look like a poker chip. Anyways, so we have that. We have our push rod that comes out. That push rod attaches to a slack adjuster with a clevis and cotter pin. Then our slack adjuster would attach to an S camshaft and the S camshaft would go inside the back of the wheel. Next, I want to talk to you about checking brake adjustment. A lot of drivers forget that any vehicle newer than 1996 are going to have what we call automatic slack adjusters. These ones on the board are known as manual slack adjusters. And manual slack adjusters require adjustment and attention by the driver. So how you can tell if you have a manual slack adjuster is it's the only slack adjuster out there that has a 9 16 adjusting bolt as well as a locking collar or sleeve that covers the head of the bolt. All, gree all slack adjusters will have a grease fitting for lubrication. Automatic slack adjusters look a little different. Anything newer than 1996 will have automatic slack adjusters and to make sure your brakes are adjusted is actually very, very easy to do. It's amazing how many drivers get caught at a scale for having brakes out of adjustment. So, we're going to run through how to adjust your brakes when it comes to a vehicle with automatic slack adjusters. So when you're checking brake adjustment, what you need to do is you need to physically pull on each slack adjuster by hand. Now, if the brakes are applied, you can't pull anything because the push rod is out as far as it can go from inside the chamber. So we need to do this with the brakes released. So if I was a tractor trailer operator, class one operator with a tractor trailer configuration, how I would do this is I'm going to check the brakes on my truck and my trailer. So what I could do if I don't have any wheel chocks is I can release the brake on the truck, but I'm going to leave the trailer brakes applied. So we're going to push in the yellow button and release the tractor brakes. Then we would crawl underneath the vehicle and with a push rod, uh, with a, pardon me, with a pry bar or a screwdriver, we're going to pull on the slack adjuster and see if we have an optimum half inch of travel come out of the chamber. So when I pull on the slack adjuster, that's how much I should be able to pull out of the chamber. So I would check each wheel, and it's tough because you gotta crawl around under there. 
under the drive axles. So you would check each wheel for a half inch. Once you've checked your tractor brakes, then you would come into the truck. You would set your brakes on the truck. And you would then release the brakes on the trailer. Then you would go into your trailer and you would pull on all your slack adjusters on the trailer. And you're looking for an optimum half inch of travel. So doing it this way is safe because we have one set of brakes applied at all times. Once you're done the trailer, you can come back in, set your trailer brakes, and then you'd be done. Now that's what's known as a free stroke method. We're going to talk a bit about the applied stroke method. If you have poker chips on your brake chambers and you want to check the applied stroke method, when the brakes are applied on a type 30, on a type 30 brake chamber, we should have approximately up to two inches of travel on the push rod between the push rod and the indicator. So if you have two inches or less, that's a good sign that the brakes are actually adjusted. Also your slack adjuster and push rod should be at approximately 90 degrees. This one's over 90 because there is no actual uh, S-cam or brake here. So visual check of brakes and adjustment when they're at operating temperature or fairly cool is a 90 degree angle between the push rod and the slack adjuster and approximately up to two inches of push rod travel between the indicator and where the push rod comes out. So that's the applied stroke. On our board here we have what's called the low air warning device. So it's just simply a visual indicator. So this has a light and trucks will have a visual indicator on the dash as well as an audible alarm. Okay, Ours is very irritating and we can turn it on and off with a switch which is nice. So we have a low air warning device that's set to go off at 60 psi or greater. Also in the truck, we're going to have air pressure gauges on the dash. So these might be labeled as uh, P for primary, S for secondary. Some trucks label them as gauge one, gauge two, and Volvo likes to label them as F and R. F is front, R is rear. So we have a gauge for the primary tank. And we also have a gauge on the dash for the secondary tank. So I hope this helps you out a little bit on understanding some of the air brake components and some of them how they work. Uh, stay tuned, we'll be uh, posting a video, hopefully not too long from now, um, of the actual air brake run up and fan down procedure to uh, inspect the air brake system on an actual tractor trailer. Until then, take care and enjoy.